Hi everyone, salut tout le monde. Today we are going to talk about cracks. We're going to make cracks together. So this is uh, some cracks on glass, or glassy uh, substance, glassy material. Probably pretty thick. If it were ice, it could look also uh, similar. So let's see how I did it. Um, I made two types of cracks, the glass cracks and uh, concrete cracks. So we're going to start by the glass. I go through the graph node by node and I'll try to show you absolutely everything there is to show, uh, every settings. I probably try to optimize the graph on the fly so you'll be able to follow along very easily, I think. So it will be very close to a step-by-step -step tutorial. The goal is that you understand the techniques involved um, and uh, use them on your own projects if you want to. Let's uh, look at it. So we have um, some concentric circles here, and then lines that are organized uh, radially. And let's see some real life reference. These cracks uh, on ice. So as you can see, the cracks propagate uh, deeply into the ice. As you can see, we have very fine and very sharp lines, but also more organic uh, cracks. It's still very sharp. But as we can see, um, the look of the cracks depends on the, probably on the strength uh, of the impact and the thickness of the glass. So we clearly see uh, the lines with very similar uh, intervals amongst them and our circles. Here we have something a bit blurrier, a bit more organic. Yeah, we have some blurry parts here. So I'm not too far off from the reality. As I say sometimes in my video, what we gotta do is to make something that looks interesting. Um, not too far from reality, but we have to transcend it and to make something that is um, unique and that we like. Let's start. So I began with the lines, the straight lines that propagate from the center. For this, I just use directional scratches with a 90 degrees rotation to have them uh, vertical. Very small variation on the angle. I use this order, but uh, I'm not sure that's necessary. As you can see, without this order, it's not much uh, different. Let's play with the pattern amount. I'm sure we can, uh, we could get uh, an interesting result if it was not cracks, uh, if it were something else. Maybe a strange form of life or a fungi. Let's turn it down. It was 0.09. All right. Uh, the size, of course, we want thin lines, so uh, the x value should be low. We can increase it to see. Oh. <laughs> this is something unexpected. Um, looks like uh, clouds or I don't know, cotton or snow or something vaporous, smoky. Very interesting uh, results, but it's not what we want, sadly. So let's get back to a smaller pattern size. That's all right. Then I used uh, a node that uh, I don't use often, but it's a Cartesian to polar grayscale. It helps me uh, getting a radial distribution of the, of the scratches. And there's no settings. If you want to change uh, the uh, output, the look, you have to play with the di directional scratches. Then I just used a small levels node, not to do much with it, but uh, in the case, I would like to make a generator out of this. I have some uh, control over the thickness of the lines with this levels node. As you can see, I can play with it. 
make the lines very thin, very discreet, or a bit more present. Try to keep it uh, quite light. Okay, that's it. That's good. Then, of course, I don't want uh, the lines to be everywhere, so I need to focus them and keep them in the center. So I just use the parabolic um, pattern with a shape node, and I think I just um, scaled it down to a 0.6 scale level. Then you just multiply it. You multiply your cracks with this shape. What's good that it's uh, that it's blurry on uh, on the sides, so you have the fall off effect. Multiply with a full opacity. Then what we need to do is to um, break the lines a little, give them a more interesting look. So what can we do? I like to use a multidirectional uh, grayscale node. It's a multidirectional warp. As you can see, um, the value, the strength value, may be high. In this strength and the global angle, I think I just uh, used uh, clouds too. Let's see. Yes, it's a clouds too. It's a very powerful node, a very interesting one. The downside is that you have to, uh, it, it doesn't work uh, with a grayscale uh, input, uh, so you have to get a gradient map to convert your grayscale uh, base to a color one in order for the multidirectional warp to, to work. Yeah, that's not very practical. I don't like it too much, but it's a cheap uh, node. It works uh, very fast. Of course, you can use another directional warp that is really good, the DT directional warp made by Daniel Tiger. It's a free node. You can get it on Gumroad here gumroad.com d-e-t-e and he has some free content so this node here you can uh, get it for free and it's a very uh, interesting node it can get you similar result to the multi-directional multi warp so don't hesitate to use it I'm gonna show you the difference oops sorry I didn't change anything uh, for now, but as you can see, it takes uh, takes more time to process than the multi-directional warp that I used originally. Just try to find another value because uh, my lines here are too curvy. The modification is too heavy. So maybe 0.02. Yeah, 0.02 is, uh, is a bit better. And this one we can um, we can keep uh, ten or maybe a bit more. Let's try to play with the warp direction with the right angle. You can get a very nice result. Okay, the problem with the multi-directional warp that I see is that it breaks my, the lines a bit too much. You see, if they are not continuous, it's a bit disappointing. So, whereas with this one, the lines hold their uh, look, and their continuity more easily. So that's interesting. And the difference in processing time is not that great, not that important. So I think I'll get, uh, I'll go with it, with the directional warp by Daniel Tiger. So I don't need the gradient map, and I don't need the grayscale conversion. I think we have something better. Just play with the levels node and uh, increase uh, the medium gray level a bit more. Yeah, I like it. It's more realistic this way, I think. Okay, let's keep going. Um, then, once you have this, what you need to do is just to maybe use um, slob blurs or something to break the lines even more and get them to a point where, um, where they, um, they look like they cut through glass. Before doing it, I'd like to add 
the circles with just uh, screen uh, blend. Here I used um, a subtract. I just subtracted those lines from these ones, but I don't think it's a necessary step. So I just um, blend them together without any subtraction. So I just have to do that to do this. And we shouldn't see much of a difference. Just uh, look at the surface with the subtract and without it. Yeah, not much of a difference, so we don't need this blend node. And let's see how I uh, made um, those concentric uh, circles. It's exactly the same process as uh, here in the bottom. But this time I used the scratches generator. Let's uh, make it 256. I want it, the lines to be horizontal, so no rotation or very uh, very small uh, spline rotation on them. A high scale, a bit of distortion, even though it's not uh, mandatory. Well, just uh, just try uh, your own settings. For the fade mode, I like to use start plus end. You could get probably something similar with uh, the directional scratches. But as you can see, uh, the scratches generator is not that expensive compared to the directional scratches. Of course, it depends on your settings. So here I have found good settings for a good performance. Once again, I used the Cartesian to Polar. And this is what I get. I know that with a good uh, warp, I will get a cool effect. So just uh, multiply with uh, multiply it with a shape node, a parboloid. Focus it in the center, and then it's time for the multidirectional warp. But once again, I do the same thing as in the bottom. I use the DT directional warp. So I just duplicate it. Control D. I don't need the gradient, I don't need the grayscale. Let's just try to get something similar. Here the strength value was too high, I think, so let's try 0 0.02. Okay, it's, uh, it's nice. Let's play with the direction vectors. Yeah, I like it that way. And the intensity of 12 should be enough. Let's go with this uh, new wrap. It's kind of different, but I think it's thinner. I'll try to increase the intensity. That's all, that's all right. Let's delete the nodes that I don't need anymore. Here I used a histogram scan, whereas here I used a levels node. You can do the same thing, it's not a problem. Maybe I can increase the position yes, to see the difference. But here, uh, my circles, the circles are too dense, so Let's get back the position where it was. So here I just blend the two together, the circles and the lines, with a screen mode. Okay, that's nice. As you can see, we uh, we have a good looking result here with just a few nodes. It's a very easy step. Steps are easy to understand, I hope what we need to do now is to give them uh, the aspect of something that cuts through the glass and we need to sharpen it also. So the first thing that I did is to use a slot blur grayscale 
with a very low intensity of 0.05 min mod and uh, 32 samples as usual. I just started by um, playing with a blur HQ grayscale. I think uh, an intensity of one should be should be good. And then I used an auto levels to work as a slope. So you can see the difference. This is the input, this is the result. Nothing major, it's a start. And then I just used another slope blur, but this time uh, with the clouds too, to get something a bit more precise. Point 0.1 intensity. But I don't use the slope blur uh, as is. I just want to blend it with the blur here, with screen mode, just to try to get the effect of the crack of the cracks that uh, go deeply into the ice or the glass. And then I blend it again with a lighter uh, blur this time on your point two blur because I thought uh, that this result is too it's too blurry so I need to turn it down a little you know to have um, thinner uh, lines so it's just a copy node so of course I don't use the copy full time but at full opacity but as you can see the effect here we have too much blur I think so I just turn down the opacity, get something more precise. So we made good progress on our glass cracks. Um, then I used um, an erosion effect to get it even thinner. So this node, dilation or erosion, is also freely available on uh, Substance Share. Let me show you. You go to Substance Share, you just uh, type in uh, Dilation, and you can download it. A very useful node. So let me show you. I chose Erosion type. If I don't do the Erosion, that's the result that I get. With a level 1 inter iteration, I get something thinner. And maybe I can go to a level 2 to get something even thinner. I don't know what you think. Maybe uh, level 1 was enough. Of course, you don't want to do it too much. I think I like the level 1, the first iteration pass. This node is useful when you make uh, cracks, dilation or erosion node. Very, very important to to use it. Then I use the blur, but uh, I also use the sharpen, so I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, let's try not to use the blur and go through di and go directly to the sharpen node. Okay, something a bit more precise. When you use the sharpen node, you want um, low values between uh, 0.2 and 0.5. The 0.5 works well. Maybe it's a bit too much. Let's try 0.4. Okay, so we don't need this blur. Okay, that's it for the cracks. I just show you uh, rapidly how I made uh, the different uh, outputs. So obviously I just uh, needed um, a background. So this is the background. Just started with a Gaussian spot one, invert them and used them as uh, with a min darken blend. And the base is just a cloud too. So this is the <laughs> this is the background, very simple. The histogram range. 
was meant to uh, equalize uh, the levels. So first I just put uh, the cracks on the background, above the background, with a copy uh, blending mode. And this can uh, be used, sorry, this can be used for the ambient occlusion, a small height depth. Usually I used uh, 0.01, but in this case it doesn't matter much, I guess, because the uh, background is uh, totally black. 0.06 is, uh, is nice. Then here, as we can see, I used another blend node. I used the base material because uh, I have two graphs in this, uh, in this one, the glass and concrete cracks. So with uh, the base material, I can easily uh, change uh, what I see in the 3D view. For example, here we have the glass the glass cracks, but if we, if I want to put some concrete cracks, I can do it very easily. But let's uh, go back to the glass cracks. Okay, fine. So I used another uh, blend node, but uh, what uh, is this one doing? I think it's the height. Oh no, it's the roughness. Okay. So from our blend here, just use the histogram range to get a very glossy roughness with details, so I just uh, increased the range and uh, slide down the position to get something uh, very glossy. By increasing the range, I get, uh, I think I get more details. As you can see with a range of zero, we have a very smooth surface, but if I increase it, we have something a bit more interesting. Okay, that's it for the roughness or the normal. Um, the difference here is that uh, with the normal, I wanted the cracks subtracted from the surface. So I just use the blend node, subtract 0.7 opacity. And this is the normal. Yeah, we can feel that the cracks are penetrating the surface. So that's what I uh, wanted to achieve. Uh, we should try it with um, a proper glass shader, probably inside the uh, marmoset tool bag. I'm just uh, trying to render it with iRay to see. You could also play with uh, the opacity levels to see through the glass, could be interesting. Okay, let's go back to OpenGL. So that's it for the normal map. And for the color, I just wanted the cracks. So I don't know, maybe uh, what if I don't use this levels node? We have something really more discreet. I think with the levels, it is, it's a bit better, but thanks to the this levels node, you can play with what we see. Trying to get less of the circles and more of the lines. Hey. <laughs> Well, this is too much. And then you, you have your base material. So that's it for the glass cracks. We covered it extensively. And uh, yeah, you can make it, uh, you can make your own version of it. Or play, uh, play with this one, change the settings, change the, you know, the levels here maybe. Just, it doesn't need to be very white. Uh, there are just cracks. Okay, just uh, tell me what you think. And uh, yeah, it's the first uh, attempt for me at making uh, glass cracks, but uh, I like that the technique is uh, somehow uh, 
very easy to get and to understand and uh, the result is really uh, quite organic and if you want something uh, less curvy less complex you just uh, decrease the intensity of the wraps you see you can get something uh, cleaner of course this thing here is not very desirable but uh, Decrease the position. All right. And maybe decrease um, the number, the pattern number, pattern amount, sorry, of the lines. Okay, that's nice. That's it for the glass. We'll cover the concrete cracks in the next video, which will be published uh, tomorrow. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.